Hi guys, on this show we're looking at Avery, Philip, Rodriguez, Thompson, Robbins, Santino, Nelson and Stallone. We're looking at 1986's Cobra. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of 100 Things We Learn From Film. I'm one of your hosts, my name's Planty, or is it Marion? Ah, oh, and I'm the other guy, John, and uh, hasta la vista... P- oh, sorry, wrong guy, sorry, wrong, wrong, wrong hero. Sorry, Dude, wrong, wrong, wrong actor, correct set, uh, arguably. <laughs> but more on that later on. Uh, yes, we are the, fir- the podcast that tries to learn 100 things from every film that we cover. John, how are you? I'm all right, mate. It's uh, Taps Half Weather again. We're going to yeah. end up getting a wee... Uh, I'm going to end up looking like Iron Brew. I'm going to be that ginger. T- t-shirt tan. <laughs> aye, aye. The old dad just, tan. Just, at the, just one, one arm's tanning nicely because I've always got it hanging out the car. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm that cool. <laughs> All right, Clarkson. Fucking <laughs> hell. Uh, of course, this week, uh, as promised, we are starting our new patron incentive, which is where instead of giving patrons the chance to vote on choices that we've made, uh, we will pick a patron at random using the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, and that will that wheel will pick will have the names of all the patrons on and will pick now in the case this week uh, it was won by who John it's, it's Biggie and I was worried about it I was really worried I was genuinely That's worried right. and be, because it's our friend Biggie who's been on before when we talked ice wait pirates. you're not Oodles <laughs> <laughs> what happened to you Stig what's going on no, no, by heck by heck is like you come on Leeds like uh, yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, yes, uh, we've, there he is, you heard it yourself, we decided Hello. to have him on. Uh, we will give every single patron the chance to come on the podcast, which we'll probably fucking regret, and most of you won't want to come on, <laughs> but there's uh, shy retiring types, such as Biggie, who couldn't resist. Hello, mate. <laughs> Hello, mate. You must have been gutted when my name came up on your we, first wheel. We, honestly, worried. I was yeah, worried. I, I, I sent it the video to John, and he went, not fucking Biggie. Uh, I had to see I'd been moving everything in my head. Like, no, don't do it. Don't be that guy. <laughs> but you'd and been like drinking Germany, then. <laughs> the worthy centipede. Germany looked at it and thought, what's the worst movie I can think I of to get did. them to watch? But, I'd have done yeah, the same. I thought I'd be, I'd be nice this time. Thank you so much. You were, and you've picked an absolute... Perla for us, mate. Do you want to tell us what and why? I picked Cobra, and it was because you had a fantastic Stallone month, which I thoroughly mm. enjoyed listening to, and naturally th- was hoping this would be one of the picks. And I, I can't remember if it was up for the vote or not. And I think if it was, I voted for it, but it didn't get I, through. I think you were the only one that voted for it, if I remember correctly. <laughs> uh, it was, it was on there, and I think it ended up being. Cliffhanger, John, possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. isn't a bad movie. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a we had a time. It's certainly longer than this, which is uh, the one yeah. thing that I will give this this a bit of credit for. It's beautifully short. It's oh, like God, eighty seven no. minutes, isn't it? Mwah! Yeah, and <laughs> I saw this. If you want a very quick bit of history, um, mm. this came out in eighty five, eighty six, eighty six, eighty six. So I would have been twelve. Hundred came out. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, I definitely saw this on a dodgy VHS from rental up the road. From you know, I walked in and picked it out. It's not like my dad went and got it. I actually walked in and got it. So back in the days when you could rent 18 and movies. Absolutely. I went and picked out Robocop. I picked out Beetlejuice. Yeah, exactly the same. John, yeah. th- cinemas for you this one? Uh, no, 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 no. This is this is uh, all, the, all the action movies. Bear in mind at that time we were all allowed to see things like uh, The Adventures of Babysitting and stuff like mm-hmm. that in the pictures. So uh, this was a, a dodgy a dodgy rental. As, as, if you walked in with a parent, you could pre- pretty much pick up anything from Saba's Corner Shop, including uh, 18 DVDs. So I was happy days. <laughs> Thanks very much, Saba. What, what a Thank hero. You, Saba. Is- as long as <laughs> Mr. Lover Man, Saba. Yeah. <laughs> if we if we went in, by the way, with uh, with with more dad's card, like like video card, they'd just check the name on the card and the number yeah. on the card, and they'd just let you take whatever you fucking want. Yeah. 
You know, yeah. um, Puppet Master, you name it, all that kind of stuff. We Manitou still that. haunts me this day. <laughs> You're obsessed with Manitou. Stop saying Manitou, someone's going to pick it. <laughs> uh, John, but Yeah, I don't remember the last time I saw this, so yeah, it's, I, really I can't remember. It, it's It'd funny be because well. I didn't remember a fucking thing. I've definitely seen it in parts, but I didn't remember a thing about it, and... I honestly loved every minute. It's it's got it's got some laughs. It's uh, got loads of great action. It's got some brilliant stunts, which we'll come to. Um, yeah, it's and fantastic. A, and a beautiful knife. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, John, what else could we have been talking about? In Man, what are you, we've already been talking about Highlander. So we've done oh that yeah, already. our first hundred. But there's uh, loads of gems in here, like uh, Howard the Duck. <laughs> Yeesh. One of your favourites, uh, Fer- Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, fuck off. Too soon. Uh, big, <laughs> big Trouble in Little China. It's pretty hey. good. Uh, Little Shop of Horrors. It's great. <laughs> oh, my God. Ruthless People. God, that's... That Ruthless People. Is that oh, yeah, yeah. comedy? Dan- Danny DeVito. And is it Shelley Long and oh, Bette Midler? That God. Yeah, that, that, yes, I remember it Bette is. Midler's in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Uh, and my pair's of favourite, Aliens. Oh yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Do you know what, John? Just that was on that 4K, original. Right? That, oh yeah, it, yeah. It looks fantastic. The transfer. I might have to pick that up. Um, it was that uh, was on the original list you gave me, John, of films that we might cover of the first episode. Yeah. By yeah. the way, I, I, yeah. So Jesus. that's. Uh, I, I don't think it's got. A, well, it's got loads for us if we do behind the scenes stuff. But we're, we're hardly going to be talking about the music of Gladys Knight on that one, are we? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, and number one, where, John? <laughs> Nowhere. <laughs> Uh, LV57 <laughs> The penal <two>. code <laughs> uh, Penal uh, Right, okay If you like what we do You can uh, give us a quid And you'll get the chance to go on the wheel um, And uh, uh, be able to do that We'll also give you a shout at the end of every episode um, Again, if you don't, if you haven't got any money to give us You don't want to give us any money Then fuck you But um, you can find us on the socials At 100thingswelearnfromfilm.co.uk As well as our Patreon link on there Okay So, going to be loads of spoilers abound for this There always is If you're ready to go, gentlemen We'll get started And we're off Cool, okay Right, so <clears throat> We start this one It's a canon, right? It's been a little while since we've done a canon but I just realised it's there are a couple of my favourite films, and I actually forgot this film existed, right? So you've seen okay. like American Ninja and stuff like that. Yeah. They also did one oh, called God, yeah. <laughs> Enter the Ninja, <laughs> which sounds. <laughs> really no, bad. Like, I horror. mean, at least buy him a drink first. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> <laughs> Enter him where I sure can know. I'm sure oh, that's yeah. What oh, no, no. Of course. Okay. <laughs> At the 1985 Cannes Film Festival, Cannes Films advertised a number of films that were never made, including, I love this, Spider-Man, starring Scott Terror and Bob Hoskins, directed (laughs) by Joseph Zito. Bloody hell. Wow. (laughs) Joseph Zito, of course, did all those um, Mission in Action movies with... uh, uh, Chuck Norris, wasn't it? Oh, Chuck, Chuck Norris, Chuck Norris yeah, yeah. movies. Yeah, 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 force yeah. That. Those, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm something of a scientist myself, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly, I don't know. Uh, also, Gunga Din, starring Sean Connery, Michael Caine, and Ben Kingsley. Oof. I mean, I would pay every single penny of my savings to see that. Nah, go I am absolutely, what a load of shit that's bound to be. Uh, Manaheim Golan had signed Stallone on a two-picture deal for roughly $25 million, an unheard of amount at the time. Of course, it was this and um, uh, uh, First Blood Part 2. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, this and First Blood Part 2. Uh, fantastic. The director is George P. Cosmatos. Uh, he directed First Blood Part 2. And the film that we mentioned last week, John, Leviathan. Oh, God, eh? You don't mention <laughs> Leviathan for 140 and then, episodes and then you mention the it Leviathan's twice. come along at <laughs> once. <laughs> <laughs> um, he also took over directing role for Tombstone from the original director and screenplay writer, Kevin Jarr. Mate. Not to be confused with his brother Jean Michel. Jean Michel, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear the rumours about the relationship between Sylvester Stallone and George P. Cosmatos? I, I'm going Cosmatos. to assume it was dog shit because that Stallone thinks he's better than everybody. Apparently, because he'd be, he was becoming a bit of a 
big shot at this point. Sloan was kind of getting to the peak of his career. He pretty much derailed the direction of this movie and took it over from what we have yeah, heard on various rumours that he is mm-hmm. technically the one that directed this. Uh, yeah, of course he did. Yeah, also when he talked to his supporting staff as well, what a prick. Anybody else that was there in my character? Yeah, they, when, when he, but he wasn't him. allowed to talk to him. <laughs> he wasn't allowed to talk to him. That is shocking, baby. <laughs> well, I say shocking, baby. It's not that shocking, is it? Uh, this opening crawl is uh, Stallone saying, in America there's a burglary every 11 seconds, an armed robbery every 65 seconds, a violent crime every 25 seconds, a murder every 24 minutes, and 250 rapes a day. And he says it as if he's quite proud of it. I know. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, 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 too many hits in the head for you, Rocky, I think. <laughs> Uh, the opening scene is these lads with hand axes at some form of ceremony. Oh, yeah. um, let's call them yep. the stone cutters or the axe oh, heads here we go. or something <laughs> stupid. <laughs> pluck, pluck, pluck three hairs. <laughs> All pluck, but three hairs. Oh, three yes. <laughs> That's, uh, every time I hear the stone cutters, that's what comes to my head. That's just well, that. as it should. Who, who <laughs> makes Steve Guttenberg a star? A star. We do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we open in this supermarket parking lot. A guy parks in the quote unquote handicapped zone. Um, the fine for parking in a disabled parking space oh, illegally is between well. $20 and $250, <laughs> depending yeah. on the state. <laughs> Of the car. It, I love that bit because it, already you've got an idea. You know what film you're going in to see. Yeah. You kind of have an idea if you've seen the trailers what's going to happen. Yeah. And then just to show how evil this guy is, he parks in a handicapped spot as well. Like, yeah. you rot up! <laughs> See if he, yeah, you think, oh, this gentleman couldn't get any worse. <laughs> but he, he certainly does. He certainly does. He heads into the market. Um, and basically shambles around, which I didn't really understand what the the, the act was, and and I assume it's kind of a brainwashed kind of thing because they don't all act quite as useless as him, do they? Yeah. <laughs> He's not very good. He's kind of like your level one boss, uh, and then you work your way up until you get to the bloke yeah. with the two massive fucking knives at an, <laughs> an iron mill. The, the, the thing as well is that when he kicks off as well, when he, um, he get, I think the guy that works there goes to approach him, and then he yeah. he f- turns around, flips his jacket open, pulls out the shotgun, and then proceeds to shoot everything in the store. <laughs> but exactly. <people>. But, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, it's like the fucking A team, isn't it? <laughs> I don't like grapes. I don't like grapes. <laughs> Stay away from the veg. <laughs> did you did you clock what this guy that approaches him, the staff member, was wearing? By the way. He got a bow tie yeah. on. He got this <laughs> black <laughs> black apron on with a white shirt and a bow tie. And he's like, "Here, geezer, what's going on?" <laughs> and he's like, "Blamo," <laughs> isn't he? Uh, uh, handicap zone is no longer PC, uh, according to the Americans with Disabilities Act or the ADA Network. In the US, they should use language that emphasises the need for accessibility rather than the presence of a disability. Uh, including the disability that this guy has, that he cannot shoot for shit. You can eat. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, He's a stormtrooper, isn't he? <laughs> he absolutely is. Um, he shoots this trolley, right? And somehow it flies three feet up in the air, like it's yeah, spring yeah. loaded. Yeah. He, he fires <laughs> a bunch of, like, he fires a bunch of silly putty at the base of it or something. Yeah. Um, outside, the cops arrive, and it's a hostage situation. Uh, Monty is trying to talk him down with a megaphone. Bart, do you know where the remote control is? <laughs> um, did you spot the actor playing Monty, by the way, lads? Oh, yes, Andy Robinson. Yeah, we know Not him Andy as. Robinson. Well, a lot of things. He's from Hellraiser. Uncle Frank, isn't he? Uncle Frank from Hellraiser. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, nice he is. Yeah. And Cobra wept. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> I don't know. Um, inside, the shooter tells this kid that he's free to go, but then shoots him in the back as he makes a run for it. Again, no blood. No. Not a single fucking drop of blood. Um, and and do that... you see what he crashed into? No. It was a Christmas tree, which officially makes this a Christmas movie. Well... There it is. I was hoping one of you would do it. There you go. It's a Christmas movie. It's all happening at Christmas. But this, isn't there something weird about Christmas in a place where 
it, it doesn't like where well, there's no snow. I know there's no snow here at Christmas, but does it not feel <laughs> weird when you're kind of like wandering around in a fucking vest? Yeah, yeah. yeah. At Christmas. There's no implication that it was actually winter at that point. No, and I guess you've got that in Die Hard, and you've got that in, um, I don't know, I'm sure there's an Australian film. Uh, Lethal where, Weapon, he's Australian. Oh, Lethal, Lethal, yeah, but Lethal Weapon's at Christmas, isn't it? The first yeah. Lethal Weapon? No That's snow again. No snow again, in what. LA, isn't it? Yeah. You know. Anyway. Yes, we, we could talk all we wanted about this, but stop talking about Christmas when it's actually warm outside, you bastards. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, Monty's colleague... Uh, says this calls for the cobra, and Stallone arrives cool as fuck. That car, though. I've got Jesus. facts about cobra. Please Whoop, go for it. I tried to search how many things I could find that are called cobra. So mm-hmm. here we go. You obviously have a snake. We all know about co- yeah. cobra snake. It's obvious. Did you know there's a cobra golf company? Oh, created by Tom Crow, an Australian amateur golfer, back in 1973. He moved to. Um, Kern, Kearney Mesa in California, I think, to start okay. Cobra Golf. Mm. He was an amateur. He won over 20 golf championships. Uh, we have Cobra Kai, which you may uh, know about the um, Karate Kid spin-off. You're always banging on about it on the podcast. I need to... I've uh, never watched it, you know. It's on yeah, the list la- Yeah, the lads kind of press ganged me into watching it uh, when I was on a couple of weeks ago. So I better get on that. Uh, I think John alluded to uh, the Cobra political TV series that um, premiered on Sky One in January 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Cobra beer. Oh, yeah. yeah manufactured yeah, of in the UK. Um, bought at uh, some point over um, by Cause, bought a controlling interest. We're more on that later. Ooh. We, we had um, that in Benidorm, didn't we? <laughs> we did have that in Benidorm. We did at the, uh, at the Indian restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Before you decided you were going to have food poisoning for two days. Yeah, yeah. yeah at least you best, got it out of your system. Best, you best decision ever made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you probably needed Cobra Health Insurance because it's a federal law that you to keep your employer sponsored group health plan after losing your job or having a qualifying event. And that's um, why we got him on, listeners, because of those seamless. <laughs> and finally, Cobra Garden Machinery was launched in 2013 <laughs> in the UK. So there you go. Oh, and uh, sorry, G.I. Joe, the terrorist group, Cobra. Is <laughs> they are. Out, I Absolutely. Fucking hell. Okay. Uh, the go. number of Cobra species ranges from 28 to about 270, depending on how a Cobra is defined. Genetically, true Cobras are members of the genus Naja. Um, I mean, I'm not going to fucking wait and ask them if they're a true cobra, you. I'm bombing it. Um, The forest cobra is the largest true cobra reaching 10 feet. They've also been docked four points for buying too many snakes or something. (laughs) I don't know. Um, (laughs) According to the University of Michigan, human victims may stop breathing just 30 minutes after being bitten by said snake. There you go. That's all my cobra facts. And and therein lies the podcast. And that's the end of the podcast. I'm really done. (laughs) <laughs> Nailed it. Much much quicker than usual. Uh, <laughs> she said. It, you better believe it's son. Um, I'm not hanging around. I've got loads of episodes of Brooklyn Nine Nine to watch, don't you? Know? <laughs> um, we meet Gonzalez, and it's his partner? Question mark. I wasn't entirely sure who briefs him. Yeah. It's uh, Poppy from Seinfeld, the guy that pees on the couch. Mm-hmm. Uh, R.I.P. Died last year. Um, R.I.P.P. Yeah. Oh, very good. Oh. Yeah. Stallone pulls up in that car. He does. Yep. Uh, he's got a personalised number plate. Did you clock that? Oh, no, I didn't. Well done. It says Awesome 50, which awesome. is spelled A W S M and 50. Uh, right. In New York, it's currently $60 for a vanity plate, and you then have to pay $31.25 each year to renew it. Oh, the 2007 right. survey, the first of its kind, revealed that there were 9.7 million vanity plates in use across America alone. Jesus. Bloody hell. Right, okay. And that car, which was... I've got it in my list here somewhere. Bear with me. It was a something... Oh, God. Where is it? Give me a second. I need to find it, because it's actually <laughs> Stallone's car. Yeah. Yeah. It was a something Mercury Coupe, I think it was. 1950 Mercury Coupe. 
But I left you to say it, Big E. I I know I was waiting. Didn't want to do it. Still my Carfax. Also also (laughs) featured in Rebel Without a Cause and Badlands. Well done. Yeah, beautiful car though. Yeah, it really was. Um, And I assume really expensive based on that bit at the end. Um. (laughs) (laughs) There's a lot of stunt doubles, don't you, Money? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Monty explains he didn't want him uh, on the job, and inside the market, Cobra's seen sneaking around, and he he, he pulls up next to this, ah, the French champagne, doesn't he? <laughs> he just stands there. The shooter catches him next to this fucking gross, pouring Pepsi stand I thing, loved it. It had like a wee swizzle stick, and it looked it was really an amazing <laughs> display, but it, the product it, placement in this film is... Oh, oh it's insane. egregious, isn't it's it? It's terrible, yeah. It really is. The... Um, the, the, and he drinks a can of cool. I feel, I feel like oh. a Pepsi. I feel like a Pepsi for I know. He, I mean, <laughs> he, he obviously wanted the calls so that he could be refreshed, not drunk. Uh, <laughs> as you know. Uh, the shooter shouts after him, It's the way of the new world. Uh, Cobra grabs this tannoy. Hey, dirtbag, you're a lousy shut. You wasted a kid. Now it's time to waste you. <laughs> Uh, the shooter demands TV cameras. He says, I don't deal with psychos. I put them away. <laughs> and then he's what was meant to be the kind of his catchphrase through this. I read, you're a disease and I'm the cure. <laughs> that was definitely the tagline on the poster. Oh, it? was it really? Yeah, All yeah, right. Yeah, OK. Was. Yeah. Um, he nice so, I think it's a crime is a disease. And ah, I'm right. The, I'm the cure. Yeah. They just changed it slightly. And dead or alive, they're coming with me. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) that's a better one. Stallone wasn't really famous for his like quips. I think Schwarzenegger definitely outdid him on that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. Schwarzenegger never really (laughs) took it particularly seriously. You feel, you know, you always felt like he was having fun. Stallone often felt like it was a job. You know, like Mm -hmm. it was overly serious, and that's fine in First Blood, which is. A very serious film, let's be honest. Yeah. But it's something like this where it's kind of comic book explosions. Oh, I mean, it is outfit alone when he turns up and it's, <laughs> he's got those, those, those shades huge and all. fuck off cuffs. The, the <laughs> shades, which if you want a pair of Ray Ban 330 outdoor sunglasses, yeah. is uh, black, flame, black frame and blue lenses, is 171 US dollars. They are smart as fuck, though, but no, I'd end up good. sitting on them the first day I had them, uh, <laughs> guaranteed. But and they- he wears those glasses through the entire supermarket scene inside. <laughs> yeah, it does. Say, and yeah. it's quite dark in there as well. <laughs> it's, like the su- it's like the supermarket in Gremlins at the end where all the lights <laughs> yeah. are off, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, looking at how he's dressed, there is no doubt this gentleman is Italian. Let's be entirely honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Outside, the reporters are asking, is it related to the Nightcrawler case? And did he have to use such force? Cobra grabs this guy and pushes him up against the wall, uh, obviously using force. On the beach, which is where he lives, Cobra's driving his car, trying to get past these guys um, who just... (laughs) Parked up, he bumps his bumper and honks at him. The guy gets out, he's got a cigarette on, and he's like, ah, it's bad for your health. He's like, what is Pinche? And he's like, I am. <laughs> and Go on. he grabs his T-shirt and, and rips, rips it. it right and after. When I watch this, yeah. you can see the guy's got a microphone taped to his chest after he pulled his T-shirt down. He's, 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 and I rewound it twice to check what I saw, and I'm definitely 100% going to say... You can see his microphone taped to his chest wow. that was exposed because he. I don't think he was meant to maybe. Rip uh, it I was going to say that because that sounds like something he improvised and it all went yeah. wrong. Yeah. He's wearing yeah. a so wire. I think even the guy was a bit kind of like. <laughs> I can, and, they just sort of stood back, didn't he? Yeah. And when he turns up in the car, the song in there is from the soundtrack oh. officially is Gloria Estefan and the Miami Sound Machine yeah. with Suave playing. That's right. And every time that car turns up, that song's that playing. That song's playing. I, yeah, because he's, he's only got the one. Every time. He's only got the one tape. Yeah. He's got it on repeat. Uh, yeah, it's literally play. at least three, two or three times yeah. there's a scene where he drives up in the car and that song is playing. Yeah. <laughs> They've got to get the money's worth out of it. And, uh, and uh, listeners that don't like the music stuff will be very, very pleased to hear none of this stuff was released <laughs> as a single. Yeah. None of this stuff charted. <laughs> so we've got, unfortunately, it means None. there's no opportunity for John to upset the people of Holland today. Uh, and <laughs> after this scene, 
where he walks to his apartment, I guess he lives in. Did yeah. you clock his catwalk? It's the strangest thing. It, Stallone rips that guy's t-shirt uh-huh. and then he mm-hmm. turns away, walks to his apartment and the Stallone walk that he does because he's got the tightest pair of jeans <laughs> on and it is almost like a model walking down a catwalk. It's so weirdly sexy. <laughs> you watch it, you just like, he clearly wanted that cut done, oh, and it is just really funny. I was cracking up watching that. <laughs> he was, it's you know, he was enjoying the day. He sat yeah, there watching so it over weird. and over and over. His, his runs even better though. <laughs> See when he was oh, running. He's oh, running. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those jeans. He's got a proper wiggle. <laughs> oh on, <isn't> yeah. <laughs> Pinche is Spanish for lousy, gentlemen. You'd be pleased to know. Ah. Uh, in his apartment, he does the strangest thing. He sits down to work <laughs> through this. all this stuff. Yeah. And he cuts his pizza, pizza. John. How? <laughs> Wait, uh, what? How does he cut it? Oh, with scissors? Oh, with scissors. But not only does he cut his pizza with scissors, but he cuts the end bit off. Yeah. The, yeah. A little bite-sized piece of pizza. Mm-hmm. I mean... And he cool. gets his gun cleaning kit out from the same place. From the- an which egg. is the fridge or freezer <laughs> yeah. in an egg box and there's no explanation a why it's in an egg box and b why it's kept in a fridge yeah that's so, that's so weird. I, i've got to be honest so with you weird. whenever whenever we go on holiday and if the place that we're in has got a fridge but hasn't got a um hasn't got a safe for any reason we always put our money in something in the fridge Good to know. Always do it. There you go. There you go. Absolutely. So that that's obviously what he's doing. He knows people are going to be looking for his guns, but they're probably not going to be looking for his gummy bears or his grapes. Uh, in this case, your money was our apartment in Benidorm, though. It was indeed. It was. It was mine. It's not real money though. When it's euros, nah, is no, it? you spend it like it's money, it? monopoly money. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he cleans his guns to this Toys R Us advert in the news. Oh, Boy, yeah. have we done Toys R Us to death. Um, the Night Slasher has killed his 15th victim. Um, the, the report, the woman on the report says, the victims are Asian businessmen, the elderly, and a sexually abused child. I know. <laughs> like Jesus. <laughs> Asian businessmen. I mean, just business. They're just businessmen. Businessmen, I... Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Fucking hell, the 80s. Every word. They could have just said a child as well. That's just, that's just as horrific. Yeah, it's it? just the yeah. info you don't need to know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Listen, it's an ongoing case, you assume. So why would you give all that information uh, away? Um, it's very... Uh, Rachel said to me while we were watching it, do you know what? This is really reminiscent of uh, the Night Stalker Richard Ramirez case, the real case. Um, in California, between 1984 and 85, convicted of 13 counts of murder, five attempted murders, 11 sexual assaults, possibly of a child, I'm not sure, and 14 burglaries. He died on death row in 2013. And this was literally like the year after all that had happened. So you can't help thinking that that's in the news at the minute and you're kind of like, oh, fuck it, we'll just have that. Aye. He that's, can't sue us from that prison. That bad. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so... Uh, that night, across the city, this woman locks up a shop. Now, there's loads of people get killed and it's just absolutely just... They're just like murdered and there's nothing to it is there yeah. let's just fucking murder some people let's show people being murdered <laughs> we almost needed a little montage of like people being murdered to like shiny happy people or something tonal shift isn't it like it's a horror movie in the, in the middle it, of an action movie yeah very much so and again uh, maybe that's a, a a directing decision from a man who's not a director mm. um she gets in her car and it's smashed up by these lads with what I can only call a fucking war hammer. Do you know That's what I mean? Huge. It's a proper two-handed a- attack weapon. Uh, and they murder her in slow motion. <laughs> Which, I mean, see? That's how you use slow motion in a film. You don't have to do your entire film, your three-hour film on Netflix, in slow yep. motion. I fucking agree. Schneider. All right? Anyway. Um... <laughs> And the police station, Cobra, or Cabretti, as we learn, wants to use his own style of policing to catch the night slasher. Monty explains he's on the zombie squad for a reason. Mm -hmm. Cobra doesn't want to wait for it to happen again. Um, I assume this is some nights later, but it could be the same. It could all happen across three nights, this film. Uh, Two nights, I'm not sure. (laughs) right? Because it's not clear at all, is it? It's, It's not even slightly clear. It's just like they're wandering around the city murdering people. Um, 
there's this underpass, a van full of people shunt this woman um, before giving her a bit of a stabbing. Uh, meanwhile, Bridget Nielsen's driving and singing. I mean, we're all guilty of just like not paying attention to anything that's going yeah. on, belting and, something. And out. her jeep <laughs> with that hair. With, with that, with that hair. I had hair. Uh, what would you? What What do you tend to belt out? What's your go-to song to belt out, Biggie? When you're driving? Oh, I've, I've got my uh, hip hop playlist where I'm right. Biggie's beats, which I've Biggie's curated beats. over uh, X amount of years since Spotify has been there. I've got probably pushing two, three thousand songs. It's a playlist. And I just always have it on shuffle, so it just yeah. randomly plays. I, I'm, 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 sh- it, so. I'm sure that's a go to when you've got your little girl in the back of the car. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, she has her own playlist. She has her own not safe for work playlist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's got Cypress yeah. Hill on hers. <laughs> John, yeah, what I about you? Into them. Oh, I go for anything. I'm, I'm the same as Biggie. I've got a playlist, but it goes for ELO to Pink Floyd. Sometimes it really gets me really high up, and then it's like, oh man, e- ELO. <laughs> that's a fucking shout, by the way. I was uh, I was driving around town today with um, the Offspring on. All oh, right, uh, smashed by the Offspring, which is uh, absolute belter. Of an album. Bang, now I want to go away and listen to ELO. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, at this point, we're kind of introduced to the Night Slasher, right? We kind yeah. of get some more proper yeah. visuals of who he is. So, I've got a fact here that um, uh, Nielsen, she uh, worked with Arnold Schwarzenegger on Red Sonja before this yeah. mm-hmm. and had an affair on set with Schwarzenegger, which came out not so long ago. Yeah. So then she ended up in a relationship with Stallone. Yeah. And worked with him and slept with him, I assume. Right. And then the Night Slash you introduced to is Brian Thompson. Mm-hmm. And he slept after with Stallone. many years later. <laughs> he <laughs> ended up doing a parody of the Expendables that he made himself called the Extendables. Ooh. And the Expendables starred Stallone and Schwarzenegger oh. together. Look How about that? that? There's, there's like movie that? connections. We do like that. That's it's a parody good. called The Extendables. I mean, yeah. I, I can only imagine how bad that is, considering how bad those Expendables movies if, are. Yeah. <laughs> we might do the first one. Poor. We Man, might do the first one. Swore, isn't there? Jesus, I swore. The ex, ex, yeah, you know what? I ex, haven't seen all of it. I saw half of The Expendables and got the, bored. The first one, yeah, it's, it's not great, but it's it, it, it's the best of them. Yeah. Uh, of, certainly of the four. They went for nostalgia, definitely. He's like, they oh, did. look, there's Van Damme <laughs> lapping somebody else I don't like. <laughs> jo- John the Jeep? Oh, no, I, I, Jeep? I just, went, I just the, went for the main car. The 1985 Jeep CJ71 Laredo. Yeah, because it feels a fair. I rhyme off all these bloody cars and we won't get one fact for it. So <laughs> We don't. We you can have as many facts as you want for cars. Uh, yeah, so. Right, I'll rhyme off my 30 guns then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, she ends up driving past the scene of the crime. The bad lads spot her and they take chase. Um, later in the scene, Monty and Cho realise that they've got co- got to get Cobra on the job. Uh, whilst this is going on, one of the night stalkers... <laughs> is that where they meet? Co- in the middle of nowhere? Yeah. They, this, they, 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 they're on top of thing. a building or something. Does it make uh, any sense? It's a car park. Uh, so they meet twice in the office to shout at Cobra. Yeah. Twice. And then... Yeah, they're clearly isolated in their office. Yeah. So then all of a sudden they decide to, yeah, let's get him on this case now properly. Yeah. And they get them to meet in a, a random top of a building I car know. park. I well, because it's Batman so come weird. In. It's because such a... <laughs> they had that car park for three nights, and so they had to use it for all three <laughs> nights, not just the scene that's coming up. Uh, whilst this is going on, one of the Night Stalkers, who is a cop, I, I think she's actually called Stalker. Or Staker, P- Mr. P.I. Staker. <laughs> <laughs> but I've, I think I've called her, I've called her Stork, Stark, I, I think. think. She's called, I mean, that's a bit on the fucking nose. How did they not figure out that someone called Stork was one of the Night Stalkers? Jesus. You know, and that's the first place she looked. She's leading up to this, all this point, and then all of a sudden she's really evil. Because she must have been working at the police for a time before... Uh, oh, yeah, she's got all the access. In she's a detective. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. It's uh, again. We don't get enough of why and and how. It's obviously a cult of some sort, 
But yeah. we don't have enough of that. There needs to be much more of that, in, in, in my opinion. Uh, she looked like a budget Nancy Allen, didn't she, for the guy? Yeah, she yeah, did yeah. a little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, yeah, non-union, possibly had a stroke, Nancy Allen. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they fix everything. <laughs> in your fucking face. <laughs> um, well, uh, so they find Bridget Nielsen's character, who is called... I've written Edith Nudson. Is it is it Edith or is it... Ingrid. 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 Uh, so I'm going to call her Edith all the way through, but of course I mean Ingrid. <laughs> Uh, not to be confused with 90s Faroe Islands goalkeeper Jens Martin Nudson, who used to wear a bobble hat for international matches. Biggie's killing himself laughing because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> what a brilliant link, I love Six, it. 65 caps for the Faroe Islands. Probably didn't win a single one. Uh, we might have to send him 100 things beanie, John. <laughs> I didn't know, I. Um, at the scene of the crime... I, I wouldn't get one. <laughs> You've got photographic I evidence. Say, I'm, 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 I was going to say I'm surprised you're not wearing it, but it's fucking boiling today. So it's right, yeah. Ah, oh, look at that. There you go. There you go. That's fantastic for a, an audio podcast, Biggie. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> That's going to prick up there as we're on a baseball cap. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Um, at the scene of the crime, Cobra's here. He tells Gonzalez that he's violent because of the junk food he eats. You should try raisins or prunes instead. Rice and fish. And I'm kind of like, all right, fucking box. <laughs> <laughs> Plankton, fishes of the sea. Uh, right. Now, this next scene really fucking threw me, by the way, because it <laughs> made me think it was set in some dystopian future with killer robots. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. It just Wicked. left throwing between Sly and Rodriguez questioning people <laughs> mm-hmm. and Pop shots of these montage. fucking robots which is <laughs> so Edith weird. in a photo shoot question mark yeah but there's a last it one's a lingering so shot yeah, wasn't it? it's just a lingering shot of these three robots yeah, lingering that. shot metal, of the robots metal, and, metal Mickey <laughs> and, and, the, and the music at the end goes Bardo Bardo <laughs> and like, oh, the fucking robots are in it now you know take, take that Arnie do you know what I mean? And it sounds like an asthmatic Darth Vader in the background it of the song as it does. starts. It's so weird. And to think that back then, that's what they thought the future would look like. With <laughs> <laughs> like this, they're trying to be so far forward thinking that this is what it's going to look like. It was insane. Uh, I, for one, welcome our pervert synth overlords. Uh, yeah. I think Stallone's got some sort of weird fetish of robots because he <laughs> also had a robot in Rocky IV. Rocky IV. Happy so birthday, Polly. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Polly. Fucking hell. I love that room. Because, again, that's a really, like, scary, serious bit where it's in the dark with the bug eyes. Yeah. And, you know, it's coming towards Polly and then he shits himself. It's like, Happy birthday, Polly. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, we got to do Rocky one, John. Uh, and, yeah. and, and, the, and then work our way through them one a year, I think. Definitely. But was that the song Angel of the City playing at this point? Is that where that song comes in by uh, Yes, it does. Uh, yeah, I didn't have anything on that one. Yeah, I, th- I think he um, he also did uh, No Easy Way Out, which featured in Rocky Four. Oh, is that him? Oh, that's big, a great song. Yeah, he's, that's a, right he's a big fan of um, the guy's music, so yeah. um, he got No Easy Way Out to f- appear in the Rocky soundtrack, and he oh, right. managed to get... Right. Uh, Angel of the City in this one for Cobra. Nice. Okay, good work. Um, once all this nonsense is done, the photographer and Edith head to the basement car park. Oh, and the just... photographer is David Rash. It yeah. is. Yes. Carl Muller from the Succession. Oh, he Carl was one of my favourite characters in Succession. He really was. Great character. So, so good. He's also in... Um, in the loop, the um, the film of oh, we, um, James Gandolfini. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, Ianucci, um thick of it film. Hi. He's in yeah, that. Yeah. He's very, very. He's very good in that. Playing the best kind of Carl Muller kind of character in that as well. And he played the lead role in Sledgehammer, which was an eighties TV. Oh, fucking hell. He's, what's his name, Hammer? He's not, mm-hmm. he's, he, Mike yeah. Hammer? 
Question yeah. mark? Yeah. Okay. Fucking hell. Yeah. Um, he's really good in those. He's a real dirty pervert in this. Claiming he he's going to get he's going to get her better jobs by sleeping with her. That will help you. Which, yeah. I, I I don't want to do this for me. I'm doing it for you. I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's for, I'm, I'm, I look. I'd love to sleep with you, but I'm doing this for your career. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of videos about that online. Uh, uh, he rightly gets murdered here by the Night Stalkers, as does this businessman with gift-wrapped champagne. <laughs> yeah, just walking by. Reason. Why not? Yeah. And, and the they also sec- hate pipes, because everything they attack seems to be a pipe. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. So I like, they've, they've obviously plumbers. just... Yeah. <laughs> They've just looked at that scene out of uh, Highlander and gone. Let's do I'll that. Some of that. Let's do, yeah. let's do that bit. Well, let's just chop some pipes. How can we get lightning? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, the security guard gets out the lift, by the way, and he is fucking rammed between a wall <laughs> and this 1950 <laughs> Ford Econoline van. And I would love to have seen that just. You know, like the, the the guy out at the end of RoboCop who yeah. just gets splattered. Yeah. I wanted to see that for that guard. I think um, two stuntmen got injured in the making this film. Oh, you don't fucking say! Yeah. yeah, Christ! I mean, even if they'd run a, a, a bike at somebody, they'd have got injured on that, right? Um, Edith hides and they give up extremely easily, looking for the only woman that's seen them murder people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like they just go, yeah. Well, well, we're never going to find her. See ya. Um, later at the hospital, Gonzalez and Cobra are questioning her. She explains that she saw the van and the guy scared her, um, but that there were more three of them. The guys decide she's going to be put in a safe house and argue over they, what's they, left of her dinner. They get they get the artist to do a photo fit of He Man. It's He Man. Oh right, <laughs> I didn't spot that. I didn't spot it's that. It's not, but it just <laughs> looks exactly like it looks, it looks like Adam, like Prince Adam. Prince Adam. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah, he's but, got he's, he's got this upset he's got this really scaredy cat cat, which all of a sudden turns into a battle cat. <laughs> but yeah, the um the the only fact I got from that sort of stuff was that obviously um drawings went onto photo fits. Um and now you've got the sort of evolutionary systems where they get pictures of people and combine it so that they mm. can work out almost a, an actual picture of somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this was introduced in the 2000s. Um, several of these systems originated in academia and in the 2012 police uh, field trial indicated that the Evo fit directly led to the arrest and suspects of uh, conviction in 29% of cases. Oh, nice. right. Okay, good stuff. Um, the only thing I've got around it is that the 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 drawings are not supposed to look exactly like the person. They're supposed to make people that know that person think, "Oh, that could be them." Back a memory. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what it's about. Yeah. Thank you, Rachel, for that one. So it's a Rachel fact that one. <laughs> uh, in this hideout, the night slash is explaining to the night slasherette. Uh, or whatever she's fucking called, slash, uh, that he's going to get her while he sharpens your Rambo knife, John, that your well, dad's so upsettingly broke. Funnily enough... And he's sweating uh, all the time as well. It's always hot where he is. Where is it, like? <laughs> Apparently, uh, they had to In the winter. a three-foot a three one just to get the glint, just to get, just to oh, get that, right. that look okay. at it. But uh, I also know a guy that bought one of those, that exact knife, over mm-hmm. in... Um, where was it Thailand and he also mm-hmm. brought back Faces of Death 1 and 2 and the only oh, reason I remember wow. that is because the knife see the studs they would they could screw them out so yeah. it made it less offensive <laughs> so he <laughs> <laughs> was like look he's going to oh happy days I never used it but he, he kept cutting himself apparently he, can just, he kept cutting himself on set with a knife because it was so sharp right I can imagine it was, it's a beast in it but no oh, nothing like knife. my Rambo knife <laughs> that's a knife <laughs> Cobra heads away to check some files. He and Gonzalez argue over the fact that neither of them were looking at how attractive uh, she was, honest. Uh, back at his home office, Cobra's printing something out on this dot matrix printer, by oh, the way. Oh, God. I'll I... never forget that sound <coughs> for as long as I live, yeah. the dot no. matrix printer. Yeah, yeah. At the hospital, uh, the night stalker murders a cleaner and takes his mop and outfit. And I love this nurse absolutely rattling him for not using the service escalator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it turns out it's the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course it is yeah, to keep uh, to keep, uh, keep them the gems away. Uh, this hospital, by the way, is more empty than that one in Silent Hill. 
isn't it? <laughs> the the oh, amount they... you pay for insurance, you'd at least expect a porter or two. Well, there's only, um, hang on, just looking at, I looked that up, Los Angeles Central Hospital serves Greater Los Angeles community for 130 years, it facilitates 318 beds. Oh, right, I'm, it's I'm tiny. Sh- I, right. It's not that big, I'm, I'm sure bloody uh, the Sergeant General's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it probably is. Accommodate all the Glass regions, getting busted up at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Back at Cobras, this pair burst in on him with axes and he makes short work of them, including this dressmaker's dummy that falls off of a fire escape. It looks atrocious. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? Yeah, it really is bad. Uh, but at least that means, you know, three stuntmen weren't hurt in yeah. this film. But nothing came of that. Even though he killed two of them at his apartment, they could ID'd, that is, that, that nothing happened. That was it. No, no, absolutely. Cobra rushes to the hospital in his car. He arrives just as the stalker breaks into into Ingrid's room. She's hiding in the bathroom and he knifes his way through the single plywood door. Yeah. He? There's not a lot of this. It's like cutting through paper. <laughs> He'd have got splinters or fuck that guy. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, she escapes. I like when and... she um, is screaming and screaming. No one's coming out to help her. And as no. soon as she hits the alarm button, literally Everybody, the whole yeah, hospital, the whole hospital out comes out. Right. It's, right. It's, it's almost like the Joker's about to blow the place up. <laughs> She and uh, off... when you were talking about Stallone taking out those people at his apartment, why on earth has he got a massive Pepsi sign on the side of his wall? <laughs> Product placement. It's, again, <laughs> it's like that episode of Seinfeld where there's the uh, Kenny Rogers chicken uh, sign outside that's keeping him awake all night. <laughs> uh, Edith gets away in the crowd at the hospital. Uh, Cho, Monty and the Chief are absolutely ringing out Cobra and we learn, uh, obviously his name is Cabretti. Um, do you have an attitude problem? Yeah, but just a little one. Okay. <laughs> Did you notice how many more people get added to that office as the film goes on? Yeah. It, it they do just keep just bringing people them. in. Yeah. And then more people come in to shout yeah. at Cobra. There's at least five by the end of the movie that appear yeah. randomly in that office all at once. <laughs> Who's yeah. that guy? <laughs> yeah, just, they're, they're just, they're, it's almost like that beginning scene of Hot Fuzz, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's exactly, it's just, yeah, exactly <laughs> like that. How's, how's, the, how's, the, how's the hand, Marion? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of them, Voyage. bless him, was called Val Avery, and he was an American character actor who appeared in hundreds of movies and television shows in a career that spanned 50 years. He did over 100 films and 300 TV series, and wow. bless him, it was probably one of his last roles. Oh, right, oh, okay. I, I've written him as the chief, as the main kind of, because I assume right. they've just moved it up the ladder to... Chief Halliwell. Yeah. To him, the angry man. <laughs> but the, the guy the, that plays Captain... I've forgotten his name now. Just stares at him half the time. Oh, the yeah. Big, like, the guy yeah. with the big, thick face and jaw. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cho, he's All Captain he does Cho. is just stare at him. Yeah, um. yeah. And then at the end, just caves into him. Yeah. Yeah. It's the one of the big lads with London's burning. I thought it was like a heavyweight version. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, Back at the hospital, Cabretti and Gonzalez have brought along a female cop, um, it's Slash or whatever she's called, um, to look after Ingrid. uh, But of course, we know that she's a stalkerette. Uh, Monty's talking to Cabretti and tells he tells Monty the headquarters uh, told two of the three assigned cops to get out of hospital and onto other jobs. Why? Monty explains it wasn't HQ. So who was it? (gasps) Mystery. Uh, driving to the safe house, Gonzalez gets smashed into by a truck. Uh, and I've put, he's dead? Question mark? Yeah, it was a hell of a <laughs> Because the, you don't see I've anything of him. I've also car chase bingo here as well. <laughs> All right, yeah, absolutely. He, uh, he... So you've got the sidewalk panic. Yeah. yeah. You've got the vendor that inexplicably gets yeah. trashed. Hot trashed, dog, yeah. yeah, hot dog store. Yeah. Boxes in the alleyway. Yeah. Nice. There's a car flip explosion. Well, mm-hmm. There is, yeah. There's a ramp jump in the alleyway. Yeah. There's a barrier that gets smashed through at least <laughs> twice on either side. Yep. That has Santa Claus bizarrely looking after it. There's a fuel truck explosion where yes. the fuel trucks get shot at. Yeah. There's passenger endangerment who's supposed to be protecting. No, don't give a shit. And then the final part of it, there are Hill Street jumps when they're jumping up. Oh, oh yeah, that, yeah. Like that. By the way, that's that, 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 all. That, in one car chase, yeah, all of that. Absolutely. So you so you don't need any other car chases yeah, in the yeah. whole film, really. <laughs> all, was was, all, all was missing was a wedge in an alley. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, exactly that. And then, two, and blokes, two blokes crossing the <laughs> road with a big pane of glass. <laughs> <laughs> was also required. Uh, yeah. Oh, well done, Biggie. You 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 covered the lot there. Uh, a lot. I did. I did feel for the guy with his hot dog stall and his little little glass jar of onions uh, that would have oh, been yeah. cold and fucking <laughs> minging. Major fart bag time. Keeps, oh, yes, very much so, John. Previous episodes. What was the, the crow that they put on as well. Oh, it was it was a, a Formula oh, One. Yeah, like a, like yeah, it was like a yeah. Formula One did seat. You see belt. that? Yeah, I was like, Cer- yeah. or something. Like Remember then? I remember they used to have them on their. Um, is it escort? Uh, RS turbos and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, which like is all, all good, all good and well. But I mean, can you imagine how much that's going to hurt if you're in a crash? Yeah, you need you need a cage. Ooh, yeah, just a you bit. Do. Yeah, absolutely. You look like Iron Man at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs ribs? The the little the little thing the little jumps thing because you know you kind of so let's think about Bullet as an example the movie Bullet right yeah that's a great movie with some fantastic jumps beautiful scenic kind of jumps this looks like it was just someone had built these jumps and it was kind of like one two three four fucking hell I was just like, to see the front of the car at the gone. side <laughs> it's, uh, it's part of their bloody uh, their shows <laughs> the carnival <Yeah. laughs> Both cars end up down the docks, smashed into a boat, and Cobra helps Edith out the car. At police headquarters, Cobra tells the chief it's not one person they're up against, but a fanatical army of goons. Monty says uh, <laughs> Cobra doesn't care about Edith, he's just live bait to catch the killer. <laughs> and they, the bosses, especially the Anthony Robertson's character, I forgot his name now. Uh, Monte. <laughs> They just disbelieve him. Yeah, yeah. And everything that he said, and he's yeah. like, the he's, evidence he's is it. there. We've already had the attack in the hospital. We got called away from our post. Now you've got two separate cars. In fact, maybe three were chasing them, mm-hmm. and they still don't believe that it's, it's one it's killer. Yeah. It's just <laughs> mental. Yeah. The lack of detecting that's going on by the bosses is ridiculous. Yeah, I guess you know that's that's why they're bosses, isn't it? You know, they they leave it to they leave it to Cobra, and I, I get again, that's the whole thing. He gets results, isn't it? It's one of those kind <laughs> yeah, of yeah, jobs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and fuck anybody else. And the next day, he's driving Edith out of town. She explains the cops should put the baddies away. He says it's all down to the judges not making the effort. Uh, okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, stopping at this place for gas, Gonzalez. He didn't die. Uh, as loads of junk food. Cobra explains he should have some meat in his diet and holds up a frog. I hate frogs' legs. Uh, he says. Did you clock the drink that he got out the vending machine? It was a Coke. Coke classic, wasn't it? So after all the product placement from Pepsi, I bet they were yeah, well chuffed. Oh yeah, they'd really have been absolutely guys. delighted, wouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> and that's when you get the reveal of his first name. Uh, made, yeah, which is made, made Marion. <laughs> made made Marion 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 and I've got some Cabretti. facts around that if you want. Them. Okay, please. Yeah, please. Here we go. So Stallone had originally come up with the character's surname because it, this movie was actually meant to be Beverly Hills Cop. Mm-hmm. Did you know this? Yeah, Axel so, Cabretti. So Stallone rewrote the script. Um, original's name, the original name for the hero was going to be Ellie Axel, which then turned into Axel Cobaretti. Um, naturally, they didn't like what Stallone did with the script, so he left the project, which went to Eddie Murphy, mm-hmm. um, which weirdly had Bridget Nielsen appear in the sequel with Eddie Murphy yeah. as the villain. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, Stallone decided to sort of base this material with this sort of hero cop. Um, saw it more as seeing him as a modern day cowboy so Stallone based it on John Wayne and John Wayne's real name is Marion Morrison that's right yeah absolutely and I've got a list of other famous people with um, male celebrities with women's names oh go for it you've got Ice-T his real uh, name the rapper his real name is Tracy Marrow oh right oh very good yeah, yeah. you would change uh, it you've got the actor <laughs> yeah <laughs> should have been T-Bone <laughs> Because Ice Tracy doesn't sound half as good. No, it doesn't. Ice Tray. No. Um, Stacey Keach, famous yep. actor. Yep. Mandy Patinkin. Mm-hmm. Leave Schreiber. What Leslie is Lee, 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 Lee the woman's name? Lee. Yeah. Is it really? It yeah, can okay. be. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Jane. Crowther. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Leslie Crowther. Yeah. There's a few. That okay. Fantastic. Thank you very much. 
Uh, of course, as we all know, um, Marion uh, John Wayne, Marion's nickname was the Duke. <laughs> hey, number one. Hey, number, hey, number one. one. Hey, number one. <laughs> <laughs> You're the Duke. Hey, the number Duke one. of New York. Hey, number one. <laughs> Fucking love it, man. I knew I just, I knew I just had to mention the Duke, and you do so that. The Duke goes, did you see chandeliers on my car, man? <laughs> hey, number one. I never it's... really took off, did it? You don't see that a nah, lot around. No, nah, I never actually. <laughs> <laughs> Come the apocalypse, man, and it'll be all the rage. <laughs> to, to, to be honest, it couldn't be any worse than the uh, headlights I've got on my car. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, he wanted a harder name. Well, like what? Like Alice. Uh, which I thought was. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> we get a quick cut at Night Stalker Base. They're smashing these axes together again. And the trio arrive at. Oh, sorry. The, the, the four of them arrive at the Crossroads Motel. Oh god, no, that takes you back. Not that one. No. <laughs> Did Benny come back from here? He's love for Bridget. <laughs> Crossroads, of course, is a British soap opera. You two don't need me to tell you that. Uh, yeah. First aired in 1964 and ran until 1988, which was 4,510 episodes and was recommissioned in 2001 and ran for 320 episodes until they burned down Carlton TV in Nottingham. And rightly Jesus. so. Jesus. There you go. Used to watch that. Mm. By the way, Rachel Point. Being... Sorry, go on, mate. I was, no, sorry, I was going to really say, can you imagine being a new recruit to this new world order? And when you go to their first meetup, and then you have to spend what could possibly be six hours a day just clinking axes Clink, together yeah, yeah. in <laughs> dimly lit yeah. rooms. Or fa- <laughs> it's such a uh, weird. That's all they do. You, you get sort of. You, just, Get something a bit more lightweight, wouldn't you? Like which a is, couple of pen knives. Which, <laughs> yeah. which is why they die so easily, because they're training shocking. They're, they're just fodder. How long do you have to do this for? Oh, a few more hours, mate. You know, it's just like... <laughs> clink, clink. Um, you were going to say Rachel said something. Yeah, sorry. yeah. Ra- no, it's fine. Uh, Rachel pointed out this location looked like the town in First Blood. You know, with the hills and the low yeah. clouds. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Uh, Ooh, very yeah. much so. Um, she wasn't wrong at all. In the restaurant, we get treated to Cobra putting a song on the jukebox, but instead of paying, he just hits he fun- it. F- he funds it, doesn't he? <laughs> hey! hey! <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, the song is Loving on Borrowed Time by Gladys Knight and Bill Medley. Um, nice. Another one not released, but Bill Medley, of course, was one of a very, very famous duet. Uh, the Righteous Brothers, the other one was called Bobby Hatfield. They were not brothers, John. No, why? Did why? I? Why Jesus. must? Why must pop groups? Don't, do, don't, pop don't groups say it about Thompson twins, or there'll be war. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first single for um, the Righteous Brothers was "Little Latin Loopy Lou," which we talked about during High Fidelity episode God with yeah. lovely Rob Jones. Yeah. Um, Edith covers her fries in tomato sauce, and then she asks him if he ever switches off. And does he ever get involved with women? No, because they couldn't put up with the way I live. They'd have to be a little crazy. You're kind of like, we've all seen Bridget Nielsen on that episode of Fantasy yeah. Football. She's fucking nutty. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> By the way, she's got this hat and sheepskin coat on um, that are right out of Del Boy's wardrobe, aren't oh, they? Oh, God, I. <laughs> he who dares, Marion. He who dares. <laughs> <laughs> Just wish they had one of the crash helmets on. With the <laughs> <laughs> this time next year, Cobra, we'll be millionaires. Or something. I don't know. Um, we see the Night Stalkers leaving on bikes. Uh, that night, um, Stalk is caught on the payphone by Cobra. Why aren't you using the payphone in your room? Ah, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. And he's kind of like, yeah, sure. Why not? He he must like interview being a you know a cop and getting to the point where he's a lieutenant or sergeant, whatever his role is. Yeah. He, he must interview people and know they're lying. Yeah. He can't work out from her that she's lying. It's amazing. It's he trusts so her because she's a cop. Yeah. Um, a montage of Cobra setting up his arsenal of weapons and the Night Stalkers riding through the night. Edith that wakes SMG up. SMG though. That Is that SMG what it was? It. It's, a, it's, it's called a Jetmatic That's SMG. It. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I've never seen it. I've never, but it's never cracking it. and oh, it's he, beautiful. he's got the best control over it. 
Like mm-hmm. he's just spraying later on, isn't he? Just yeah. with one hand. With that laser sight really... that actually does nothing. Just absolutely. <laughs> as soon as you fire, it's like. <laughs> you see the laser sight for like a fucking two seconds at the end of that setup, and then he doesn't use it. I know. Because Anything it doesn't matter. Because it fucking. Oh, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> Sprays bullets. Of course, I only had one. I want a laser sight as well. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Edith wakes up, she can't sleep. Maybe because he's building a fucking anti-aircraft cannon over there. (laughs) She invites him to sit with her. She hopes to see him again after the case is over. They kiss. I think it might be a very good idea, she says. Uh, The sun's coming up and here come the stalkers. Um, Stalk's gone from her room and the boys look for her. They arrive at the motel and start shooting the place up. Uh, they do roughly about three hundred thousand dollars worth of improvements to the place. Uh, <laughs> see how flimsy they were, though. Bullet holes straight through. Jesus. Again, yet more um, plywood uh, yeah. if ever we needed it. Gonzalez takes an arrow to the knee or something as they're escaping. <laughs> it's is he dead this time? I guess only time will tell. Um, Edith <laughs> starts the truck and they head out. Cobra on the back, gunning down all the bad bastards. And there's some really, really good stunt driving. Oh, it's good. It's so um, yeah. Including this bit where this guy gets hit not only by the truck but by a bike after that as well. <laughs> yeah. After he yeah, comes yeah, off yeah. of it, and I thought that that's dedication to your craft, there, sir. I know. Double whammy. <laughs> Double blammo. <laughs> Indeed it is. <laughs> um, Edith drives through this roadblock and they have to go on foot through this orange grove. It's a really good set. This mm-hmm. filming location is a really good place to film. But the last thing you want is when you're biting into an orange. It's to have like a bullet in a it. A bullet in it. I mean. uh, or a knife. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he sends her to the foundry where she's banging on the window of this security office and the security guard looks fucking furious at us. I know. Saying, what are you doing here? <laughs> There's nobody else. We couldn't afford any extras. So what are you doing here? Uh, don't hit the glass. They don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't like that. <laughs> they don't like it yeah. when you touch the glass. <laughs> Like fish, <laughs> and he's like the only employee in this yeah, fully functional yeah. chemical yeah, foundry. Yeah, all the stuff is. is going on in the background, but there's no people. <laughs> it's like a foundry in 2024, isn't it? It's all fucking run by. It's run by those robots from the video uh, where you're on. The link. That's yeah, what it, it is. is. Here they Got come. It. Yeah, Got it. Absolutely. Um, Stark turns up and blamos the guards. It's not a very safe place, this fine foundry. There's fire, molten metal, sparks just... <laughs> Chains happening. everywhere. Grab a chain yeah. and just that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> you turn and, a switch and it sets off a big fire flame the wall right. of the <laughs> And ju- Just off screen, there's a Terminator being lowered into a vat of lead <laughs> with his thumb up. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's a gang of stalkers. Connor being really paranoid. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I mean, look, you'd be upset if you'd seen, you know, all those people killed on that. She'd uh, seen things in that yeah, park. In people that park. living their lives, just living their lives. <laughs> just living in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that meme. Yeah. Uh, the gang of stalkers doing what they do best, stalking. Uh, there's one guy who's, who looks pretty nasty. Cobra's above him. He just drops some fuel on him. You have the right to remain silent. And he then flicks a lit match on him and he goes up. And we've yep. got a man on fire, which we There you go, your favourite, mate, your favourite. Absolutely. Um, almost there, <laughs> listeners, now. Just as Stark is about to shoot Edith, Cobra shoots her. The stalker himself is now looking for Cobra with his massive Rambo knives, plural. Uh, <laughs> the, the lines are, um, let's, let's bleed, pig. You want to go to hell with me? You can't stop the new world. Your filthy society will never get rid of us. We are the future. Cobra arrives and pulls his gun. You'll never shoot uh, murders against the law. You'll have to take me in. And then even I have rights. Take me in, they'll say I'm insane. Court is civilised. It's really badly fucking written when I'm reading it out like this. Um, (laughs) But I am not. This is where the law stops. And I start. Sucker. (laughs) Do you know the link of that? It's uh, the line uh, is inspired by a line spoken by Steve McQueen. In the film The Reavers. Oh, the right. Reavers. Okay. It's not one I've seen. Um, and, of course, the link between them is they both appeared in a movie to do with the Nazis and escaping from them. Oh. Oh, very good. Oh, mm. yeah, because Stallone's in Schindler's List. Yeah. yeah. Famously. <laughs> what, what, what Nazi escape film is Stallone in? 
The pianist. Escape oh, no, that's from Adrian victory. Brogdon. Is that the one oh, escape, P- escape to victory. Oh. Yeah, or victory yeah. in America. Or escape to victory, yeah, whatever yeah. it's called. Yeah. Here's your corner. Here's your corner, Hatch. <laughs> <laughs> we can win this. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking We've up. Got a perfectly good goalkeeper here. Let's <laughs> break his arm so you can escape. All right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that lad Jesus. plays for Ipswich. Leave him alone. <laughs> 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 Fucking hell, how did I forget about Escape to Victory? One of probably one of the best. Um, sports movies that there is. It's certainly up <laughs> there with Dodgeball and True Underdog. Yeah, it's a fun movie, but it's mad. Yeah, it's fucking, it's fucking stupid. Max von Sydow, though, he always does good Nazi, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. <laughs> he was born to be a Nazi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was born to be a knight playing chess with death. Do that. Uh, and an old priest. Yeah. Anyway, he's about to pull the trigger and. Stork jumps on him. He loses his gun, but gains a chain, John, exactly as you yeah. said. Just yeah, fucking yeah. finds a chain hanging around. <laughs> um, it, there's a bit of a battle between them, which ends with the stalker picked up. This massive guy is picked up by tiny little S- Sylvester Stallone. I yeah. ain't buying it. Um, <laughs> and put on this huge hook, by the way, and incinerated on this flamer thing. Yeah. It's fucking brutal. That's bad. It's a way to go. It really is. Um, Cobra and Edith emerge from the foundry and we see Cobra talking to Gonzalez on a gurney. He's still alive! Again. Yeah. And he wants yeah. gummy bears. He yeah, does. Yeah. He can kill for them, he says. Which are originated in Germany, um, which is popular under the name of Gummy Bar. Oh, um, oh, I see we have a, a, a we have a man of culture. <laughs> uh, which was uh, created by a guy called Hans Riegler Sr., a confectioner from Bonn, who started the Haribo Company in 1920. Um, the bears were inspired by trained bears seen at a street festivities and markets in Europe. And that's where they went on and uh, invented the dancing bear. And dancing bear in porn has been around for over a decade. <laughs> and its origin is traced back to the early 2000s. The first Ooh. example of the type of porn was released by a company called Barely Legal. Nice. Wow. <laughs> that, I mean, there's That's a, a fucking again. connection. Did you take all the math? Did you manage to get all the facts? There, there's, there's a connection I'm not allowed to make because I use a work laptop. Uh, fantastic. Work. I'm going to look that up. Uh, 1.4 kilos of gold bears on Amazon by Haribo. Uh, 12 99 It's a great deal. Oh, um, yum. The Adventures of the Gummy Bears cartoon ran from 1985 to 1991, 65 episodes. It is on Disney Plus if you fancy watching it, lads. I don't recommend <laughs> it. It's fucking unwatchable, as I discovered <laughs> drunk one night last year. Uh, yeah. Although oh, it wow. might be good for your little one, Biggie. Yeah, I think I was probably that age when I it's possible. Gummy Bears. She might be into yeah. that. Yeah. Unless you're put, putting Robocop on for her, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mum would love that, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, the chief says to Cobra, if there's anything they can do, they will. Uh, oh, sorry, this is Cho. He asked for a replacement car, and he's like, uh, yeah, it's not in the budget. God, don't, don't be a dick. Like, yeah. if you're going to do it, do it. Uh, Monty said he would have looked for a more subtle resolution, but he knows it's not Cobra's style. No hard feelings. <laughs> Cobra punches him out. No hard feelings. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, Edith and Cobra ride off on a motorbike, and that is our movie. Beautiful. I'm pretty sure, um, Biggie, you will have some facts for us. I've got a few more. Um, 1985's Rambo First Blood Part 2 um, had the most kills um, with 75 at that point. Um, this movie featured 41 killed by Cobaretti. Yeah. Um, Stallone's biggest count by far is 2008's Rambo, which he kills 252 people. Oh, there's a lot of CGI blood in that, though, isn't there? I'd rather no blood than CGI blood, if I'm honest. Yeah, agreed. I've got Cobaretti and Gonzalez work for the LAPD Zombie Squad. This was actually based on a zombie squad for real in Belgium. Yeah. Uh, What else have I got here? Uh, You mentioned about the three-foot knife. Um, Stallone got into trouble for canoodling with... Nielsen Ooh. during the filming of this he wasn't taking part of this seriously and that the uh, movie was behind schedule because of that uh, he got told that by the um, I think it was the one of the directors Okay. yeah there could have been a sequel but um, Stallone feels that this movie um, reminds him of a difficult time in his life because of the split from Nielsen they got divorced not long after so he, he never went back to uh, the movie alright oh, oh, right. okay 
It almost got a sequel, and there was originally a TV series planned in 2019 by oh. Robert Rodriguez, was going to make a TV series based on the character. Oh, okay. It seems to be stuck in development hell. Yeah, uh, well, well, it is what it is. Uh, that's, it, that's it for me, I think. I don't know cool. about anything else. Uh, John? Uh, right. uh, movies filmed in location Los Angeles, Long Beach, and Peru, California, and the filming took or occurred in back alleys, bars, banks, hospitals, insurance companies, and tattoo parlors. Who knew? There was something that came up that says "Mugs Up Coffee House." Okay, it was what was we saying, and I looked up, and it's actually a place, and you can get a double cheeseburger for three dollars and seventy cents. What? So, that sounds phenomenal. That's amazing. Value. That's nice. amazing. Uh, you can legally lower your factory fitted suspension by thirteen centimeters, but it wasn't sure whether that's in the UK or USA. I'm sure it's probably UK because mm-hmm. USA they just scraped off a gun, didn't they? Yeah. Um, All my friends <laughs> know the low rider. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, car engine boost system appeared. Um, after tuning packages came in the late 70s, so that's yeah. like NOS. Uh, there's no law in the Highway Code or Handbook that prohibits you from using nitrous oxide, so mm-hmm. for your boots. Mm. Uh, the average, the only reason I looked at this is because the houses got shot up so easily and they look tiny, but the average house size in the UK is 818 square feet, whereas in the USA it's 2,164 square feet. It's <laughs> a lot of feet. Uh, tried to look up the felony. Crime database for <laughs> for for, uh, for um, LA, but it wouldn't show me. But it showed me for New York, um, okay. and it looks as if the crime rate felony offences were steadily going down until 2020, and over the last four years have shot up a lot. Yeah, because because people are like, ah, fuck it, if I'm going to die of COVID, I might, I might as well, well die bat robbing bat a bat bank. Someday, yeah. Nothing yeah, to that's... do with having Trump as president. Oh well, well, no, good yeah, point. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, good point. Uh, and that's me. That's what I got. Fantastic. Oh, I forgot. I got another one Go here. On. Just yeah. that the uh, the film was loosely based on a novel called A Running Duck by Porter Gosling, uh, which yes. later was, uh, became another movie called Fair Game in 1995. There's Cindy Crawford's Billy Baldwin that's movie. It. Billy oh, Baldwin, Jesus. listeners, remember that guy? Piece of shit. <laughs> um, nitrous makes a car go faster because it provides more oxygen in the combustion chamber of the engine, which allows more fuel to be burned. Um, they go past Johnny's Shrimp Boat, L.A., in the chase. It's on 2712 Witter Boulevard. Uh, it's a great little menu. You get six fried shrimp and half rice, half chips for $13.99. We're going a la carte tonight, John, at Johnny's Shrimp Boat. Chips and rice. Uh, chips and rice. I'll be at Bubba Gumps. Thank you very much. <laughs> um... They also uh, they drive down East Seaside Way in Long Beach. What is there? The Long Beach Convention Center. Uh, this year they have got on May nineteenth Swan Lake performed with a live orchestra, and on June the fourteenth Sesame Street Live. Ooh, <laughs> there nice. you go. And one final thing: you missed a song, Biggie. I'm quite surprised actually. Um, Hold on to our vision by Gary Wright. Uh, best I could do. It is it's written for the film, so there's nothing there. But he did play keyboards on George Harrison's "All Things Must Pass" album. There you go. But this film originally had an X rating. They had to cut it and edit it down it, because it was that violent. It wouldn't have passed yeah. what they wanted, so they got Absolute, it an R rating. Absolutely right. We'll make that the last one. Um, Robocop. I've got one more. We forgot oh, his gun. It. We forgot about his gun. All right. Okay. His gun is a Colt. Oh, it's a customized Colt Gold Cup National Match. Okay. Oh, that's his name. Got two more. Go for nice. that. <laughs> Cobra was nominated for six Razzie Awards. Deserve them worst all. picture, worst actor, worst actress, worst supporting actor, oh, worst shit. new star for both Brian Thompson, both for Brian Thompson, and worst screenplay. And finally, I know this very well. In 1986, the film was made into a video game by Ocean Software for the ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64, Amstrad CPC, and I finished it on the Commodore 64. Did you really? And it was a hard-as-nails side-scrolling shooter. And do you know what happens at the end of it? Thank you for for playing or something like that, is it? No, it loops and it starts all over again, exactly where the game started. And and the tape went out the window. Did Did it make you run the tape again or did it just automatically go through? It just automatically looped, so it just oh, wherever you got Jesus. to the end, it just went and started it all over again. I would have been absolutely it was furious. Hard as no, I spent 
a lot of wasted youth on that game playing that and trying to finish it <laughs> for no reason absolutely no reason I gotta give a shout out to our friend Paul Payne uh, who helped me with some of my facts um, he has got a um, he's got a Cobra comic book out at the minute for sale where he is doing oh, wow. working on the lost print the lost art print uh, sorry the lost R-rated print that you've just mentioned, Biggie, from the film. Um, so he's done his own comic book uh, of that R-rated, of what he knows goes on in the R-rated one. So it's pretty nice. gruesome. Yeah, we've got, we've, we might have the first one in the house somewhere. Uh, but yeah, you can get that if you look up Evil Genius Artworks on Etsy. Um, you'll find that alongside all of his um, Death Wish for Jason stuff, his Rambo versus Blair Witch. Blair Witch stuff that we've all got copies of, uh, and a lot of his artwork, which is a, a Laura Laura fun, isn't it? Oh, um, so, yeah, so Never we've got we've got Paul for that. So yeah, do 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 list do go away and, and and pick that up. They're really good prices, Biggie, and the books are they're so fun. His style is is brilliant, yeah. and they really are love letters to 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 the the films that he's. That he absolutely loves. So, um, I I know I know we'll be listening to this uh, guy. You fucking missed it. You fucking missed one. You fucking missed uh, one. He's done it all this drinking his cheap bunny yeah. booze. Yeah, but um, <laughs> a, uh, sorry, a, bud. <laughs> at least uh, at least MK got beat this week, eh? Whoa, fantastic. Anyway, that's that. Uh, Biggie, as you're the guest, do you want to have a guess at how many we got? Um, I hope it's more than Stig. Uh, I'm going to say 145. Oh, Biggie, it's 162. You beat Stig. Well done. Yes. Get not, in. not really. Oh, not really. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but, for a, but for a fucking minute there, his ass was going like that. that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm going to have to come on with a seven hour. <laughs> yeah. Get Ben, get, get, get ben Hur. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's neither uh, cut of Ben Hur. <laughs> no, uh, it's it's not it's not as many as that. Um, I, I obviously you've gone over, um, but I will tell you the one thing that you've got that nobody else from your podcast has got is dead on one hundred. Oh, dead that's, on one hundred, on which is an apps, which is the whole point of the fucking podcast. Yeah, yeah. Well done. The whole point Finally, of the somebody gets a hundred. Otherwise, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. ridiculous title. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and at the end I get to say 100 things Biggie thank you so much for joining us do you want to tell the listeners uh, where they will get you and your nonsense yeah I mean we're on all of your usual podcast platforms we have our own website beautifully curated by our stick boy uh, modernescapism.co.uk um, yeah if you listen to podcasts you'll find us on any of your podcast mm -hmm. players um, we have our weekly podcast that we do as a five um and then we have our scorch sheet which is our D, D podcast a spin off of that that's great fun um uh, really enjoyed doing that um we do lots of patron specials and all sorts of weird mad stuff we've got x-men going on at the moment the yep. guys have just finished or modern escape his men <laughs> Um, you've got Kenny it doesn't Potter's work, does finished. it? It really doesn't ah, work, it's, Biggie. It's, really it just, it's, just, it's just, it's just one syllable too many. It's like, it's like me trying to do a song for you when you're not on for the, for the breaking news <laughs> show when I've been on the. Oh, you cover times. me very well, mate. Thank you, you really very have. much. But it's so hard to get breaking Biggie's breaking news into a line of anything. Uh, <laughs> that's for sure. yeah, it's, it's it's been a joy uh, not doing those breaking news stuff. Um, <laughs> no, I've, but, mate, I've got to list them as long as my arm if you want any inspiration. <laughs> Send them through, mate. I'm oh, running I'm out of ideas. <laughs> but yeah, we, we do our Biggies Awards as well, which I believe uh, you both have won a, an award from the Biggies. Yeah, well, I won one last year and John won one slagging me off this year. I, I, Cheers, I Biggie. Sent, I sent all the, everybody I know, and I sent it to my daughter saying I finally won something. <laughs> and they were so proud. <laughs> So proud. <laughs> Result. Fantastic. But yeah, but no, so, this po your podcast is amazing. It's been a great supporter of ours. And, yeah, well, uh, look, you, you know, we, we, having me on. we love having you guys on. We just need candy now, and that's not going to happen. There's in just a million loads, years. loads of material I, for you guys. Here's, here's guys loads of material to work with. Because <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps slagging his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so and do thank you for having me back. No, no, yeah, absolutely. No. Thank you. you. It's only because you paid. Uh, if you didn't pay, you wouldn't have been allowed back on. Uh, Modern Escapism, listeners, is, is what they call a variety podcast these days, I guess. Um, where you get loads of news and, and lots of uh, uh, reviews of various bits and pieces. And ultimately, it's, it's a lot of fun and well worth the money that I pay every month, I think. 
Uh, right, brilliant. Um, uh, again, if you like what we do, uh, go to 100thingswelearnfromfilm.co.uk. All of our socials, all of our bits and pieces are on there. And you can subscribe to our patron as well. Uh, on the subject of that, let's give a shout out to our patrons. Somewhere within all of these 100 <laughs> windows so that I have windows. open, it's there. Uh, it's like swordfish it's... in your house, isn't it? With all these screens. <laughs> fucking, like fucking silverfish in this house, I'll tell you. Uh, right, okay, so uh, in no particular order, uh, we have got uh, Dean, that effing guy, uh, Candy from Modern Escapism, Oodles from Modern Escapism, uh, Kieran, Jake, uh, lovely Rob Jones, Jen Stewart, uh, and uh, Megan, uh, Dale, Ali, uh, who were all organising Megacon for us and our live show on the whoop, 17th whoop. of August. Uh, Maria, uh, Paul Parks from SP Film Viewers, Ian McComish, uh, Emily Vint, uh, Nigel Davis, uh, Dan and Gavin Belson from the Be There with Belson podcast. Aaron from the Z1 podcast, which is back up and running with new episodes now. Uh, Joe from Hallmark of Greatness, who's having a month or so without me on the podcast. And they've just covered, by the way, um, Street Fighter, the Street Fighter movie, oh. Uh, oh which God. I listened to today. Great episode. Terrible film. I haven't seen it since I was it's at the cinema. Awful. I can't bring myself to watch it again. Um, I saw it for the first time a couple of years ago. And did you? I was... I haven't yeah. got over it yet. It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, some twat called Biggie. Uh, Mono oh, and Kira guy. from Mono <laughs> Runs at the Movies. Uh, Ian from Cult Connections. Gav McGill. Uh, Josh Wilson, super familiar with the Wilsons. John, you're doing a bit of work with them at the minute. I yeah, enjoyed yeah. listening to your dulcet tones yesterday <laughs> while I was cutting the hedge. Did you Did you understand the fast version or the of course slow I version? Did. Oh, I understood the fast version, of course. And then I had to message him to say, Ken is part of a dialect, not a language. So, so I defended you, John, uh, even me. though you don't give a shit. Uh, modern Escapism, <laughs> Stig, of course, uh, and Gadget, uh, lovely wife, Rachel, the lovely wife, the Erin does, uh, the wife, Rachel, and Phil Farish. Uh, thank you so much for your money, lovely people, and we will be coming to you sooner rather than later with another spin of the wheel. Um, we're probably going to do do them as and when. It's going to be sporadic. Sporadic? Sporadic. Sporadic. God, I need a drink. It's going to be sporadic, uh, but we are going to some months do more than one a month. True, good, 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 fantastic. John, final words. I'm not going to kill you. Uh, no, no, words. just uh, thanks for being for coming on. I just love the guys coming in for modern X X as men. Is it more than X? That's oh, the no, one. The X Is it? Did I get right? <laughs> X Men. <laughs> X Men. Uh, but no, thank you so much for coming. You on. should have said it when you had the chance, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's on yeah, me? More than X X Men. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, brilliant, fantastic stuff. So, uh, of course, all that's left to say is he's been Biggie, he's been John, I've been Plenty, and this has been one hundred things we learned from Cobra. See ya. See you guys. Bye.